It's becoming increasingly clear to people that Genshin Impact sucks, for beginners at least. Well, maybe you think it just sucks in general, but regardless on where you lie on the spectrum of Genshin Impact enjoyment, I think most people agree that Genshin Impact has steadily been getting worse. Don't get me wrong, there's been some massive improvements obviously, but there's still plenty of parts to Genshin that have and will continue to become bigger issues as time goes on. And if left unaddressed, these issues will make Genshin Impact a much worse game when it's finished. The idea of Genshin Impact ever being a finished game seems crazy to think about currently, but already it's clear if you aren't playing and keeping up with the updates as they come out, you'll have a hard time catching up. That's because many elements of the game are showing how they're flawed in the long term. For example... There's lots of issues with characters, so many in fact that it could be its own video, but to quickly summarize, the rarities of characters is an issue. There are characters that are 5 stars but shouldn't be, and characters that are 4 stars but shouldn't be. The ratio of 4 to 5 is becoming so problematic that there are more 5 stars in the game now than there are 4 stars, because each update adds as many 5 stars or more than 4 stars. Except for one update that only added Rosaria. We've already come to the issue of there being so many 5 stars that they've had to increase the number of character banners there are at a time to cycle through the 5 stars enough, but ultimately that just delays the greater issue of there being too many. I'm number The common idea people have is to just add more 5 stars to the standard banner, which makes perfect sense, but that too eventually will run into the issue of there being way too many, especially if there's like 35 stars on the standard banner and you only really want one of them. An easy way around that would be to just do what the weapon banner does where you can sort of pick one 5 star to go for. So there's a pretty easy way to solve this character issue, Hoyoverse just has to start taking the steps to get there, but they might not want to. If they start adding less 5 stars, and they start making the current 5 stars easier to get, then people will stop spending as much money to get the characters they want. Though another intentional issue with 5 stars that I don't think they'll fix because it makes them more money, is that some 5 stars are just better than others. I mean, it makes sense for the Archons to be better than any other 5 star, except that Venti has already sort of been outclassed by Kazuha. Then again, you wouldn't want the very first 5 star to be one of the best characters by the end of the game, which is probably why they've made every Archon lose their Gnosis. For the sake of gameplay, you've gotta nerf those gods so they aren't significantly better than everyone else. Then they came up with a clever story reason as to why they're weaker now. That way you focus on a better playing experience overall, rather than strictly on story. Or you could do the exact opposite, like they did with... Mondstadt and Liwei were developed together prior to Genshin's public release, so those two areas were made to scale well together. However, by the time Inazuma was released, a large portion of Genshin's player base had already reached what is essentially the cap of level scaling, Adventure Rank 55, where the scaling for Adventure Ranks has such a dramatic increase that it's very clearly supposed to be a soft limit on Adventure Rank, with a slightly harder limit at 60. But because people loved Genshin so much, they had managed to get to this Adventure Rank already before Inazuma came out. They had max leveled some of their characters and farmed perfect artifacts at the time, and because of this they were way stronger than they were intended to be at this point in the game, and people were asking for much more difficult challenges. And well... It suddenly got harder. In my own experience, I had started playing after Inazuma had released, and I played at my own pace and gradually got through the story, not in a rush to reach up to new content, but by the time I got to Inazuma, it was so much more difficult than anything before. 
Now it makes sense for Inazuma to be much harder story-wise, because that's the entire story of Inazuma. It's a hostile place. You're not supposed to be there. But gameplay-wise, it sucked. A lot. There was pretty much nowhere in Inazuma that was safe to be. There were large portions of each island that would actively harm you just to be around in. Not to mention that each enemy was becoming increasingly more annoying to deal with, which was its own problem with difficulty, because enemies were becoming increasingly immune to Animo's crowd control, but they could also toss you around really easily if you didn't have any good shields. So they certainly did succeed in making Inazuma feel like a hostile, uninviting place, but it also made the game feel like a hostile, uninviting game. To veteran players, I'm sure it didn't feel that bad, because it was just catching up to where they already were. Now, of course, there were ways around this. You could just avoid every fight, or even decrease your world level if you wanted to, but that doesn't solve the fact that the difficulty spike is there. That just means that there are ways for you to make the game easier yourself. Admittedly, the main issue is that the automatic difficulty scaling that comes with world level doesn't actually address how players will be scaling in strength. This is because there's two different ways to get stronger, level and equipment. Equipment is significantly more impactful than leveling, this equipment being artifacts and weapons. In the case of artifacts, you can't really get good artifacts until much later on when you can get 5-star artifacts. Or at least that's what everybody makes it out to be. Maybe this was just a personal problem of everybody around me telling me not to bother with artifacts until they were rarity 5, but in my experience, my artifacts barely ever made a difference until much later on. If I wasn't higher level than the enemy, I probably couldn't beat them comfortably. But later into the game, 5-star artifacts are everything, to the point that super low-level characters can beat very high-level enemies pretty well if they have great artifacts. There's a similar case with weapons, but it's more luck-dependent, where you just have to happen upon really good weapons for your characters. Which, the longer you're playing, the more chances you have to get those better weapons. So at some point, up in like AR 45 to 50, there's a moment where your level becomes meaningless, and equipment becomes incredibly important. And at that point, player strength spikes incredibly high. World level just isn't able to cut it at that point, so they have to have a manual difficulty spike to account for it. Players had already reached this spike before Inazuma came out. So now, new players going back through the game will have a much harder time as soon as they get to Inazuma, because they haven't been playing the game for nearly a year before Inazuma came out. Now, there are plenty of other hypothetical issues with having so many players at the cap of the game scaling already, but I think it's pretty obvious that they'll increase the cap, at least on level, eventually. Especially because there are enemies that are higher level than your characters can get already. But I wonder, maybe at that point, level will become more important than equipment. Because artifacts are already at a 5-star rarity, and I can't really see them adding a 6-star rarity of artifacts. But there's also plenty of other issues that they're facing with trying to scale- Ah, feature creep. The mortal enemy of all card game fans. If you don't know what feature creep is, it's basically when card game designers have to add more complicated features and skills and such to keep things interesting and fresh so that players keep buying new cards. It's an alternative to just making newer cards better than older cards, although sometimes they can go hand in hand. But here in Genshin, feature creep has struck artifacts. It makes sense that this would happen eventually, it's just surprising that it's happened so soon. The obvious goal with artifacts is to have every single artifact set be useful in some way, and different from every other. However, this has very, very quickly led to extremely lengthy, convoluted descriptions for artifact passives. And even though they are kind of trying to keep each artifact distinct, 
they've already made artifacts that kind of fill the roles of previous ones. For instance, Husk of Opulent Dreams is generally better for Geo users than Archaic Petra was, and Ocean Feud Clam is generally better for healers than Maiden Beloved, and Emblem of Severed Fate is generally better for everyone in the game, and I don't think it's entirely bad to have artifacts just be better versions of previous ones. You wouldn't really want artifacts that players grinded in Mondstadt to carry them all the way to Shnezhnaya, right? And currently that's kind of presented well in the way that the passives are designed. For instance, there's a lot of early artifacts that just sort of give you elemental damage boosts. And now these later ones are doing more specific things that are better than the more general boost for a certain element. Like again, with Husk of Opulent Dreams, it's specifically good for Geo characters that scale with defense. But Ningguang, for example, doesn't scale off defense, and so she still prefers Archaic Petra. But in their goal of making each artifact set kind of unique from each other, it's led to very complicated artifacts very quickly. Thankfully, two-piece bonuses are still very simple, and that's because they repeat a lot, which is probably preferred. However, when it comes to four-piece bonuses, those are all completely different, and I can't really present any super strong suggestions on how to fix this other than just coming up with new, simpler passive ideas for artifact sets. My only idea would be to do something like those four-star artifacts that are like the tiaras, that each have a one-piece bonus to reduce the amount of time you're affected by an element. Make like a five-star equivalent of that, although not with that exact exact passive, because that passive sucks balls and nobody uses it. But artifact sets with one-piece bonuses could be interesting, since you could then have a four-piece bonus with a one-piece bonus, and that would allow for a bit more variety, hopefully. The only other way I could see it going, again, is just to make new artifacts be straight upgrades from previous ones. Maybe eventually they'll do all the elemental bonus artifacts again, but just better. That's not necessarily exciting per se, but at the very least it forces players to keep interacting with the artifact system. Ultimately, the big issue with artifacts is that players just care too much about getting great artifacts. But they also kinda have to care that much if they want to beat the Spiral Abyss. But the Spiral Abyss got so difficult in the first place because players were too strong already. So, I don't know. I don't really envy the person who has to come up with all these artifacts, because balancing them just seems super difficult. Since the artifact sets are already kind of getting better as you increase your world level and unlock higher rarities, but also, you wouldn't want artifacts from the beginning of the game to be as good as artifacts at the end of the game within the same world level, which is sort of a similar issue that difficulty had. So I guess artifacts and difficulty are actually one bigger section of s World level is a scaling difficulty system in Genshin Impact, which increases the difficulty of the game as you get higher in adventure rank. Scaling difficulty systems are made to adapt to a player's skill, so if you're better at the game than expected, the game will get harder, so you'll have the same fun challenge that anyone else does. But Genshin Impact also has a leveling system, which artificially increases players' skill by just making your characters better the longer you play with them. On top of that, Genshin's leveling system has nothing to do with actually playing them. You just have to spend time in Genshin Impact with any character, and then you can level up any of your characters using the experience books. And unfortunately, as the game gets harder as you increase your world level, it means you now have higher level enemies to grind and higher level resources to get so you can power up your characters more. Most of the strength in your character's kit is tied to getting 5 star artifacts or higher tier weapons and level up materials, and you get all of these by having a higher world level. Now on paper, this sounds like this should work, but in practice, this means that you can grind grind to max level without ever leaving the starting area, because the area gets harder as you level up. Of course this could take a while, but people could do it. Now you might think, what's the point in worrying about something that is possible if it's gonna take so long that nobody would bother to do it? Well, people have done that. 
a lot of people have. It just so happens that the starting area of Genshin Impact was Mondstadt and Liyue prior to Inazuma's release. People loved playing Genshin Impact, and Genshin Impact allowed you to keep leveling up more and more, but it didn't have enough content for you to go through, so people just kept grinding in Mondstadt and Liyue while they waited for Inazuma to come out. And yes, each region is made harder than the previous region, but that just means that the automatic difficulty scaling is only creating problems. If the automatic scaling isn't actually the reason that new regions are harder than previous ones for players, then all it's doing is just making older regions as hard as newer ones. But there's not much that can be done to fix this, because Genshin Impact has live updates, and anything you could do to make it so that at the end of the game it's better would make it incredibly unfun up until then. You could set the cap lower, but then people would just reach the cap way sooner and stop playing immediately. You could remove automatic scaling altogether, but then people would just be getting stronger and the content around them would be so much easier that not having enough challenge in the game would be an even bigger issue than it already seems to be. There's another game that lives off of constant updates. Minecraft. However, unlike Genshin, Minecraft has a lot of intrinsic rewards in it. When Minecraft releases an update, people have fun with the new content for like, a month? And then they go back to what they've always been doing, which is just having fun exploring, building, playing with mods or on servers. And Genshin Impact doesn't have any of this. All Genshin has is extrinsic rewards to keep players going. Get higher level, higher adventure rank, better artifacts, better characters, a new character, and the exploration really only works when there's new content added. There's nothing that's really replayable about Genshin Impact. The only reason you ever come back to Genshin Impact is whenever there's something new to do. Whether that be a brand new update with a new area, or something as simple as just four new daily commissions. And the few things you can repeat, like domains, use resin, which is a time-locked currency, and they're not that fun to do anyway. The only reason you do them is because otherwise you're essentially wasting resin by not spending it in time. Genshin Impact is not infinitely replayable. There is a very clear end goal to Genshin. It just doesn't exist yet. So in that sense, it might just be best to play Genshin later when all the content is out. Except that you'd miss out on all the- Okay, so this issue is intentional. The timed events are specifically designed to force you to play the game now rather than later, but that doesn't mean I won't complain about how stupid they are. Well, some of them are. Events like Wind Trace and Theater Machinus are perfectly fine to be temporary, however many events are just important story events, and it's insane that they're only here for a limited time. Unreconciled Stars, which not only introduced Scaramouche prior to Inazuma, but also showed him discovering the secret of the entire universe, all the way back in version 1.1. Both of Albedo's events, which contained incredibly important backstory for him as a character, the Iridori, Windbloom, and Lantern Rite festivals had stories that, while not important per se, were still very charming, enjoyable stories featuring a ton of characters. Some of those characters don't even appear outside of events. Now for the festivals specifically, you could argue that the side events, like the flowers in the Iridori festival and the fireworks for Lantern Rite, can continue to be timed exclusives, but at least the story part should still be around. And unlike the minigame style timed events, these story ones never repeat. The Lantern Rite came back, but it had a completely different story than the first time. There are timed events that are coming out that build on the story of previous timed events you may have missed, and the content is already all there. The only thing I could possibly see that's stopping them from just slapping in these timed events as quests for everybody else is possible continuity issues. I mean, again, the first time we met Scaramouche was in a timed event, and I can't imagine it'd make much sense to go back and do that after already seeing him in Inazuma. 
but ultimately, they can just slap in one extra voice line being like, Ah, uh, yes, we've met before. Because, I mean, that's what they did when Scaramouche sees you in Inazuma. And if they really wanted to, these could be mandatory quests. Because the fact that Scaramouche discovered the truth of the universe in that one-timed event doesn't matter because they can't treat it as if every player knows that. So when you meet him in Inazuma, he doesn't talk about that at all. Okay, so there's also some other small things that'll be bad for Genshin in the long run. Resin. It's a timed currency, so people who started playing earlier will literally just have more of it total than newer players who haven't been playing as long. Enemies. I touched on this in the difficulty section, but rather than just making enemies more challenging in a fun way, they're becoming more challenging in an annoying way. I noticed this issue mostly with Inazuman enemies, but unfortunately I have now become the 1%, so everything is easy for me and I can't really judge if the new Chasm enemies keep up that pattern. Men. There's not enough hot men. Dentro. This one is more of a hypothetical issue. It could be prevented, but there's nothing for Dendro early on. You know those artifact domains that give you the bonus elemental damage artifact sets? The Dendro equivalent will probably end up in Sumeru, the fourth region of the game. And this goes for any artifact passive to do with Dendro. So until you get to Sumeru, your Dendro characters won't have anything. Menus. The menus will be too long. The crafting and furniture menus are already unreasonably long. They recently changed it so you can select each region on the map separately, but now each region is also getting an important sub-region that's taking up space, and if they keep this up eventually, you'll just end up having to scroll to get to the bottom options, which kind of defeats the purpose of having this at all. I guess they could also make each region like a drop-down menu with their sub-regions inside. I don't know, it just seems like it'll become inconvenient eventually. Every artifact-related list is only going to get worse. The enemies list in the handbook is already terrible, even with the selectable categories. I don't know why it's a single line of icons with no scroll bar, but they're gonna have to change that eventually if they plan on adding any more enemies to this game about killing enemies. I think the character menus may be fine actually, but the rest of them will definitely need some restructuring at some point. The point is, where all these issues may only be starting now, we still have at least four more regions to go, so these problems will only become worse as time goes on. I feel like lots of these issues are being overshadowed by problems facing the long-term players of Genshin, which is fair in its own right, but I would argue that the problems for brand new players are a lot more important, because otherwise it will become impossible to start playing Genshin at all. Though to be fair, it's already kind of impossible to stop playing Genshin. But even though I've accepted that I'm stuck in this relationship, I at least want to try my best to make it less toxic. Thank you to all my generous patrons. I don't have a Patreon. I also don't have any subscribers yet. So, subscribe if you want, before it's no longer your choice.